Pleasant good morning, everybody. My name is Liz, and I'm going to be your moderator this morning. Welcome to your breakout session number two. This session um, will be a 45 minutes presentation in which the last five minutes will be utilized as a question and answer segment in which you can, you're free to type out the question on the chat or you can use a raise hand feature of the platform if you'd like to do that verbally. So enlightening us this morning with the topic of rebuilding the tourism industry is no other than Mrs. Nicole Solano, the Chief Executive Officer at the Ministry of Tourism and Diaspora Relations. In order to have an idea of what this presentation will be all about, we will be enjoying a short introductory video courtesy of Mrs. Solano. I'm Nicole Solano, the CEO in the Ministry of Tourism and Diaspora Relations. Thank you very much to Centro Escolar Mexico Junior College for inviting me to present at COBEX Winter Conference under the theme, United in Overcoming Adversity and Embracing Change. Our tourism industry and economy were hit hard by COVID-19, but the time has come to focus on recovering and rebuilding. The session will take a look at the current state of Belize's tourism industry. The discussion will focus on immediate challenges faced by the industry, as well as the strategies that will be implemented to begin the recovery of both the overnight and cruise sectors in Belize. Travelers are ready to travel and our hotels, restaurants, tour operators, tour guides, all our stakeholders are ready to get back to work. In this session, I will explain the importance of working together to overcome our challenges. That means strong public-private sector partnerships. I will also talk about how Belize is prioritizing our frontline workers and enforcing safety protocols to ensure that they, along with our visitors, remain safe. I will share insights on our current marketing strategy and describe our approach to regional cooperation, how working with countries in the Caribbean and Central America can help all of us to regain our position globally. So I look forward to presenting on February 4th and sharing with you some of the monumental tasks ahead for tourism recovery. We remain optimistic and committed to working every day toward rebuilding tourism. Thank you. Thank you, and our session will now commence. I welcome you, Mrs. Solano. The floor is now yours. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Liz. Um, it's very good uh, to be here. And I just want to congratulate um, Centro Escolar Mexico and COBEC and the entire planning committee because um, it, it's a wonderful um, conference and, and very good to be here. So thank you. And, and just a shout out as well to your moderator, Elizabeth. I've known her for a while and um, we've worked on several tourism projects together. So I'm happy that uh, she's working in education where she can influence young minds. Um, this morning, I, uh, the presentation that I have um, planned, I have, I have a, a PowerPoint that I'll share, which is really just talking points, but I, I want to make this a very um, informal uh, discussion format so that any questions that you have, feel free, we can discuss as we go. Um, there, it's going to be broken down into different segments. So um, don't, don't feel like you need to wait until the end. Just, you know, we, we can have a discussion throughout the, the time that we have today. Um, but be before we begin, I noticed we have a, a group of about 13 participants. I just wanted to ask, and maybe um, um, Lisbeth, you can help me if everybody can just tell me, tell me your name, where you're from and where you're representing so I can know as well um, who we have in the room. Sure. Hi, I'm Carrie. I'm Carrie Klima. I'm uh, from the University of Illinois at Chicago and have been uh, coming to Belize for over 30 years, most all, all in Corozal. So I'm very anxious to return. Well, good to meet you. I am Dr. Eve Aird. I'm the provost of Galen University. And we do offer a tourism and hospitality management program. Nice to meet you, Dr. Aird. 
Good morning. My name is Arnold van Stuvenberg. I am the assistant dean of Stone Creek Ecumenical Junior College, and we also offer a tourism program. Good morning. I'm Carl Anderson from the University of Arkansas. I'm the assistant director for international student recruitment. Um, we have programs in Belize, um, student exchange programs, and we also have a tourism program here as well. Good morning. I am Freeland Gilharvey, Assistant Dean of San Pedro Junior College and also the head of the tourism management program. Hey, um, I'm Stephen Guns. I'm from Murray State University in Kentucky, and our business college is starting a tourism program. And I'm just want to know what's happening in Belize. So I'm here listening. Good morning once again, everyone. I'm Ms. Nancy, I was your MC. Um, I teach at Centro Escolar Mexico Junior College. I teach the tourism students, human resource management. So I'm very interested to know um, what information I can take back to them as you know, many of them will be graduating this year and I'm really concerned about employment for my tourism students in Belize. Uh, anybody else? Good morning. I'm Ande Bahadur. I'm a former head of tourism department and tourism lecturer now at Sigurd Junior College and also a tourism trainer for the Belize Tourism Board. Very pleased to be here this morning. Good morning. My name is Roberto Canche, assistant director for San Pedro Adult Continuing Education. I think we got everybody. Anybody, anybody else? I think that's everybody. Miss Jennifer okay. is just my host, go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for um, introducing yourselves. It's just very important for me to know, um, you know who, who we have in the room and it's, it's really good to have such a wide cross section of people. Um, thank you for joining me this morning. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen right now. So let me... Um, and it's not allowing me. One second, Nicole, let me check with my host. It, I think it's me, Liz, actually. It's the first time I'm actually using this particular laptop and it's not letting me for some reason. Okay, I tell you what, I'm just gonna Yes, we've given you access to share screen already. Yes, it's it's not it's me, it's not you. It's asking me to open my preferences and it's telling me about firewall and privacy, which I've never encountered. Ah, my apologies, everybody. Let me um well, and I had some nice tourism pictures for you all. Let me see. Um, let me begin. I want to just I'll use my my um presentation here. So let me let me let me begin by just saying that um, the theme "United in Overcoming Adversity and Embracing Change" really does um, is very much in line with how we're approaching tourism recovery for Belize. Uh, the, I want to talk about the current state of the tourism industry today, not only in Belize but regionally and globally, just to give an overview of that. The challenges faced in Belize due to COVID-19. The strategies for recovering the overnight and cruise sectors, which, which are our focus, um, public-private sector partnerships, safe, safety protocols, marketing, and, and regional cooperation. So those are the things that um, I want to focus on this morning. Um, 
in terms of the current state of the tourism industry, let me um, I'm sure that all of you are familiar with the fact that tourism is such an important uh, contributor to GDP globally. So in 2019, it was approximately 2.9 trillion US dollars um, uh, that tourism accounted for and over 350 million jobs worldwide. So th that information is from the um, World Tourism Organization and in 2020, international arrivals fell by approximately 20%. Um, let me just add here that that is what Belize is looking at right now. We also, uh, our, our tourism also fell by approximately 80%. So it's in line with the international arrivals. And um, over the Christmas, we had recovered to about 15 to 20% of our numbers from the previous year. That puts us to approximately 30 years ago, um, it, globally, no? So really and truly, we're dealing with a situation now where tourism has reverted back to where we were 30 years ago, which is, is, is a very difficult and devastating thing for our economies, especially um, the small economies of the Caribbean and, and Central America, since most of our, our um, most of us depend on that for our livelihoods. We have over 900 million fewer international travelers. Uh, the airlines have reduced their flights. Some airlines have closed down. So there's a significant change in the landscape of tourism today. And that represents a loss of over 200, 935 billion in export revenues globally. So um, we have seen a drastic effect on tourism because of COVID-19. And we're going now into one year of this, this kind of devastation. So recovery is going to be um, long. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be immediate. Uh, we have been talking to our stakeholders and trying to inform them that it's not going to happen right now. We're looking at toward the end of this year in Belize for things to start to recover a little bit, um, but it's going to take quite a while. We're estimating two to four years before things return to pre-pandemic levels. So that, that's what we're looking at now. Um, uh, do we have any, any questions so far on the state of the um, tourism industry globally? So in Belize, tourism accounted for 40% of GDP pre-COVID, and that's one in four jobs. So, can, so you can imagine that we had about a situation of about 50,000 people out of jobs instantly when tourism came to a halt in March of 2020. So one day without notice, the cruise line stopped arriving. And a few days after that, our seaports were closed, our airports were closed, land borders were closed, and everything came to an immediate halt. So um, people had no expectation that they would be out of jobs and they've been uh, for the most part out for um, over six with, from that point the airport was closed for six months and wasn't reopened again until October 2020 so it was it was a very difficult situation for the stakeholders and um, we're still now facing that without the return of crews because a lot of our stakeholders are primarily cruise tourism operators and there are no cruise ships uh, expected to return to Belize um, before, we're saying before April, but every day we have updates that indicate a later return. So there is no guarantee as to when cruise tourism will return. Um, with the airports open since October, we've actually had a trickle of tourism uh, tourists coming in. A lot of the arrivals into the international airport have actually been Belizeans returning home. Um, but we've seen an increase in tourism arrivals since October, a, a small increase, October to November, December. And then um, when all of the, the uncertainties were raised again with the uh, new strain, we saw a drop in January. So it's a very fluid situation and things are changing rapidly. Um, but we remain optimistic, of course. Um, to give you a, a, a look back again at last year in May, Belize actually um, 
took some pretty drastic measures to, to curb the spread of COVID early on. So um, with those borders closed and the airport closed and, and all of that, um, we were able to contain our cases and we were one of the few people in the entire region that was able to uh, boast of no cases for something like 50 days. And in that time, um, we opened up to local tourism. So that resumed in May of 2020 and there was a significant um, Belizean traveler campaign. But as you can imagine, uh, that those kinds of local travel cannot compare to the amount of um, revenues that hotels require from international travelers. So while the local market was able to help to um, re-establish businesses, at least help them to keep their lights on, uh, it really was not enough to sustain. Some properties never did open. Um, some properties still have are, are closed um, to this day. So really and truly local travel has been an important component, but it's it's only to assist in the um, in the current situation. Land borders actually remain closed and seaports are are closed um, as well. We are they do open on a conditional basis, but we have there's a lot of tourism from small vessels and yachts. And so these are all um, considerations that we're working to try to open things slowly and safely. So working along with Ministry of Health to try and ensure that protocols are, are followed so that we can open the borders and, um, and try to welcome tourists again. The, 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 any amount of tourists that we can, we can welcome into the country assists us with um, covering the businesses with covering their expenses and restarting tourism. So Currently, we are only at about 20% of last year's numbers, so pre-COVID pre arrival numbers. And accommodations um, have reported even less than that, between 12 to 15% um, of what they were, they were experiencing one year ago. So we're actually very, very low in terms of numbers. Um, as I mentioned before, small increases in arrivals from October to December, but January numbers were down. Are there any questions so far on where we are today? So what are the challenges that we're facing due to COVID? As I mentioned, the travel restrictions are fluid. So um, as you know, with Belize, our main market is the US. So the majority of our tourists are arriving from there. And what happens in the United States is an important um, consideration for travel to Belize. And with the election and the change of government, um, there were significant changes as well in travel protocols, which um, may and may not, it, it, in a way, we feel like things are going to improve because if the US gets their, their um, numbers down, Currently, with the with the vaccine and the um, the travel protocols in place, then it's better for Belize because people will be able to travel. So we are optimistic about the um, the changes, but it took us um, a lot of of collaboration and communication among ourselves to figure out how we're going to do things like testing on departure. Um, you all may know that that in order to travel into the U.S., even if it is a U.S. citizen has, that has left the U.S. on vacation, they have to test to return and they have to present a negative test result. So within Belize, we had to do a lot of work to um, ensure that those testing, uh, we had the testing capabilities and that they were actually accessible um, throughout the country. So if a guest is staying in San Pedro, they don't have to return to Belize City to get a test at, at, the, um, at the facilities in the city. They can, they can actually test now throughout the country. So if they're in Corazon, in every district, there's a public testing center at least, sometimes multiple and in every, and also private testing facilities. So that took some coordination, but it, it was, it was, it's now a situation where travelers don't need to worry about getting their tests to return um, back, but that was a challenge for us. Um, 
as you know, the travel and tourism industry has always relied on face-to-face -face interaction. Um, tourism people love to to interact. That's that's part of the business. You know, we we want to be in touch with with um, the tour the travelers. We want to connect. We want to share our culture. We want to share um, everything that we know about our country. We want to welcome them. Hospitality. It is the type of business that. We, there's a lot of interaction and and obviously with COVID um, it's difficult because you you have to social distance so just the very nature of the tourism industry has been difficult for for um, for the people in the industry and and they've been unable to have that that direct connection with any of their guests the way that they're they're accustomed to so that has been that has been a challenge um, there's been slow containment of the virus um, in many of the markets over the months, as well as Belize. Um, lately, Belize had, had experienced a spike, which is now under control again, but um, throughout the months of, of December and the early part of January, uh, we saw a spike in cases in Belize, and that um, did affect the, the travel because people don't want to come to a country that has high cases they're afraid of catching covid so these things do affect um, um, whether or not the travelers come thankfully we're at a point now where we can see that our cases within belize are lower and um, and we 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 get the messages the private sector shares the messages with us letting us know that travelers you know they cancel for so many reasons and one has to do with the number of cases that the actual destination has so we, we look at that closely um, there's low traveler confidence in general because people are just afraid um, whether they're afraid of catching the virus or whether they're afraid of getting stuck in a country that isn't theirs or testing positive and not being able to access healthcare facilities outside of their country all of those things are are contributing factors to cancellations so um, you know, we've we've seen that we've heard of quite a bit of cancellations. Also, um, not being able to travel in groups or even the cost of tests. If you're, you know, we, we heard of someone um, canceling a wedding for eighty people because, you know, purchasing a departure test for eighty people uh, just wasn't wasn't possible for them. So they decided instead of going on a destination wedding, they would just, you know, keep their their wedding uh, locally. So. Um, generally a weak demand for outbound travel. Uh, you, might, you might have heard that there is a lot of travel uh, locally um, in the market. So, you know, US travelers would decide to travel somewhere closer to home rather than get on an international flight and fly outside of the country. Um, at the same time, there's a lot of what we call pent up demand. So um, people have been on lockdown and they want to get out. There are people that have been to Belize before that can't wait to get back here. So we we are looking at at the the, um, the possibility of making it easier for people to come. Looking at things like long stays, so that um, they don't need to to they can stay without having to check in with immigration every month. Um, looking at immigration uh, requirements so that it's easier for them to come, stay, work from. You know, we, we call it work from home, right? So they could work from Belize just as easily. So those are some of the things that, that, that we've been looking at. Um, are there any questions so far on the challenges um, that we, we face? Yes, good morning. Morning. This is Andre Bahadur here. It's glad to hear some of the initiatives you mentioned because uh, I also am part of the Tour Guide Association here. And just last week, two different uh, tour operators slash guides ask me the question they have a group of 20 or 30 people one is 20 one is 30 and the question was if they all had to pay to get tested before they go back and they were deciding if they were going to come or not yeah. and um, i think i've been getting emails from um, cancun because i go there with students and i'm on their mailing list and several of them are offering complimentary tests for guests to go back to the u.s yeah. So I'm just, um, I guess I, that might be something that we consider, uh, but it's good to hear some of the other initiatives you mentioned. 
Th thank you very much for your question, because um, it's very important to mention, indeed, um, countries like, well, Mexico and in particular Cancun has, um, and we've been looking at what, what's going on in the Caribbean and the Bahamas, and there are a lot of countries that are actually putting in incentives so that the um, traveler doesn't have to pay or it's incorporated into the room rate, so it doesn't look like they're paying it, right? So we've been talking to the private sector and trying to find out um, how, how they could, you know, you know, before you used to package room with tour, well, now they're trying to package room with test. So, you know, this is a situation that we're facing, trying to see how we can be creative in packaging what is necessary to encourage travel and make it easier for them. Um, the private, um, facilities who are doing testing have said that if they have a group, they offer a discount, right? But those are those things are beyond our control. There's public and there's private. So people have the option, but the price for testing is around 75 US per test. And that's pretty standard right now um, in Belize. So when you see those, um, those destinations that are offering testing for free, those things do affect. And that's where we have to lobby as tourism. We have to, and I have that later in a presentation when we're talking about partnerships, um, there's a lot of requirement for partnerships and collaboration, not only with public and private sector, but public sector to public sector between ministries. And the amount of lobbying we have to do with the Ministry of Health, for example, to help them to understand the needs of the tourism industry is a part of, of our work, no? So thanks for that question. Um, anything else before I move on? Okay, so um, now I will talk a little bit about the, um, well, one more thing I wanted to mention before I move on, um, there are spillover effects on other in industries. So uh, one big challenge that I think ha we faced in, in Belize is that I, a lot of the, the other sectors, for example, agriculture, um, they had a big hit because they didn't, I, I don't think there was a realization until the halt of tourism, just how far reaching the effects are on, on the, the purchasing of, of chicken and, and meat and vegetables. And all of these things have affected not only the tourism industry, but spillover in other areas, real estate, um, you know, the list goes on because tourism really does touch on so many other industries and so many other sectors. So um, those are some of the things that we, ha we have to face. How do we, how do we protect what we have um, left and, and try to, to reduce the, the effects that we're feeling across industries, no? Um, so the next topic I have is recovering overnight and cruise. Uh, I just want to mention, and um, um, also for you know any tour operator, I, I want to mention that that um, in Belize there is the question of cruise tourism versus overnight tourism, and there are there's a lot of uh, conversation as well within the conservation community about whether or not cruise tourism is uh, sustainable and whether now is the time to relook at that. Um, I just want you all to know that um, with, the new, with the new vision for tourism, we do look at the, we have a, a national sustainable, let me, let me sh um, a sustainable tourism master plan that we utilize. Um, and we are looking at that to, to try and see what we need to do to shift things in the COVID era because it may, it may mean that there are shifts, but we do think that there is a way that overnight and cruise can coexist. So our approach is to try and see how we can um, look at the cruise sector and look at all of the people employed in cruise tourism and see how we can help that situation. Um, for cruise, the, the discussion is a little bit different than overnight because we are talking to the other ports. So what happens if a ship is coming from Roatan to Belize affects Belize. So all the ports have to have a synchronized approach to protocols. And those are some of the things that, that we're looking at in terms of the, the return for cruise tourism and which operators can, can work. And there's a, there's a lot of considerations for overnight it's a little, it's more immediate. We're at the point now where we can, um, we can already begin to welcome guests through, through the gold standard programs and 
uh, I'll talk about that now as well. Um, recovering overnight and cruise, we have the gold standard recognition program, which the hotels within Belize have had to um, sign up to a gold standard in order to um, be prepared to receive their guests. So only if hotels who are gold standard um, certified can actually receive guests. So when a traveler wants to come to Belize, they, they actually have to book their room, download a travel app and put all the information as to where it is that they're going to stay in, in that app so that we can know that, Ministry of Health can know that information, the tourism board um, and any contact tracing or anything that is needed can be done through there. Uh, only gold standard properties are allowed to be open for, for tourists. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what, that, what those um, protocols require. Uh, the other thing that we're doing in terms of strategy for recovery, um, trying as best as possible to ease travel restrictions. Um, you may or may not know that not only is there, we talked a little bit a while ago about testing on departure, but there's also a requirement for testing on arrival. So every tourist that arrives into Belize must come with a, a negative test. Uh, we ease the restrictions a little bit because it used to be a negative PCR test that was required within 72 hours of travel. And that has changed where we still require that, but we also, we also accept a rapid test. So rapid tests are a lot a lot more easily accessible. So um, allowing travelers to come in with a negative rapid test taken within 48 hours helped the situation as well. Um, there is, a, we, we looked at a reduction in capacity for transportation and restaurants. Restaurants had to be operating outdoor uh, for outdoor dining only. Um, we've had to look at supporting businesses and employees um, making sure that they have access to, to, um, to financing and support. Also, um, looking, we, we, we had done a survey to see where the businesses are. People are, in, are experiencing a very difficult time right now in, in being able to make payments for loans. So we've been, we've been working with, um, looking at working with um, Central Bank to try and help to relax the, the um, requirements for repayments on loans. And those are all things that we've been doing. So trying to, to um, make it a little bit easier for businesses to survive in, in this time. Um, as I said, it will take probably three to four years for recovery to pre-pandemic levels, we think. And, and this is the general, um, the general consensus globally. Uh, but we are hopeful in Belize that at least by the end of this year, we should be seeing uh, quite, you know, a, a little bit more um, travel. We, we're hoping that once the vaccines are, are out, that will help um, travel. Um, moving on to public-private sector partnerships, uh, as I mentioned earlier, across government ministries. Every day we're in communication with some other ministry. Collaboration is the buzzword now because we need to work together. We need to be creative. We need to find ways to move ahead as difficult as it is. So working across government ministries is, is one thing, um, but the private sector associations and the communication with private sector, understanding what people are facing is a very important part of what we do and the work that we do. Um, in Belize, we have the private sector associations, the Tourism Industry Association, the Hotel Association. We have several tour operator associations and destinations, tour guide associations. There's chambers of commerce um, throughout the country uh, that constantly on a daily basis um, con communicate with us and let us know what they're experiencing in the destination. So we get calls, letters, um, and, and just information sharing. In addition to that, we've been going out to the private sector. So we've been doing um, destination visits, meeting with stakeholders, just to try and understand what they're facing on the ground so that when, when we're in the room trying to make decisions, we're, we're doing so um, from the standpoint of actual facts that we've received um, from people on the ground. And the, it, it really has been a very positive experience um, just going around I, I think sometimes people, people say it's like tourism therapy. 
right? People in tourism have had a hard year, um, not only because of business and loss of business, but just I, I think from the fact that they haven't been able to, tourism people like to get together with other tourism people and they like to, to welcome their guests, as I said before. So not being able to interact also has an effect on people who work in tourism. So um, they, we've, we've tried to, to go out now that the cases have, have gone down a little bit while maintaining the protocols and all of the, um, the, um, all of the measures that we've put in place for safety, because obviously not only is safety important for tourists and travelers, but also for the, well, especially for the front, frontline employees. So our Minister of Tourism has talked about the fact that we need to, um, we need to, to look to, for vaccines for our frontline workers in tourism as well um, as a priority. So that is something that we're looking at to not only vaccines for the tourists coming in, but vaccines for the people working on the frontline in the industry. Um, so yes, when it comes to public private sector, there's uh, between ministries, private sector associations, and also businesses and individuals, because um, we try, you know, when you talk about consultation or receiving feedback, um, it's easy to say you've done consultation when you talk to a private sector association, but sometimes the associations don't actually reach out to every corner. And so we're, we try to be as accessible as we can in receiving um, uh, feedback from people and trying to, to assist wherever possible. Uh, in terms of the safety protocols, as I mentioned, the gold standard, um, there's, there are things like signage, you know, um, when I'm, I'm sure that you all have seen when you go into to, to any hotel, it will say six feet apart. Some hotels have um, temperature checks that that are automatic, like you just walk through the door and there's, you know, you look to the temperature, the, the thermometer, and it, it gives you the reading. There's um, sanitizing. So they've had to put hand washing stations and um, um, uh, any, uh, hand sanitizer outside of the doors. They actually have to do a lot of logging. They have to uh, monitor their guests on a regular basis and actually note their temperature, which is a challenge too, because sometimes guests don't want to be, um, they don't want to be <laughs> checked every minute, right? But if they're leaving the hotel, they need to be checked. When they come back, they need to be checked. So they're doing, they're doing all of these temperature checks and, and logging. And th some of those things are things that need to be reviewed as well to, as, as more information comes out as to whether or not that's necessary. And things will change as the vaccine comes into play. So um, there's, there are those things as well as the fact that every hotel that is a gold standard must have a quarantine area for guests that may test positive. So um, that is, that is a, a requirement under the gold standard. Um, I know that we're running uh, short on time. Let me, let me go straight into marketing and just let you know that um, one of the things with marketing of the destination uh, even during COVID when everything was closed down, it was important to maintain um, the destination top of mind in key markets. So digital marketing continued, social media marketing continued. I hope you all are following what's happening with Belize on social media, especially you all that are not here, please travelbelize.org and, and there's uh, Facebook pages, social media. Um, it's, it's very nice. You have a daily reminder of uh, especially those of you who are in areas that are freezing cold right now, you can go to, to these sites and actually see a beautiful beach photo and be inspired for the day. So I invite you to follow all the social media pages for, for tourism in Belize. Uh, there's been a lot of public relations, um, influencers, bloggers, vloggers who um, have actually come down and you know, write stories, uh, trade relations and presentations to, to travel agents training on a destination, how to sell Belize, and, um, and most importantly, analytics, um, looking at data, looking at numbers, trying to see, um, trying to make projections for the industry, sharing information on statistics, and um, just getting information out there so that people can make better decisions. Um, I'm almost at the end. Uh, I, I want to talk just briefly about regional cooperation. 
Uh, Belize is a part of the Caribbean uh, Tourism Organization. Uh, we have people in the private sector who uh, are a part of the Hotel Association, Belize Hotel Association, which also falls under the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. Uh, there, there is work being done with Munda Maya, as well as um, Central America through the, the Central America Integration System for Tourism. Uh, so we do have quite a bit of collaboration with the region. Uh, it's important because we need to be able to, Belize is in a unique position. We are located in a place where we can, we can capitalize on being a part of the Caribbean or being a part of Central America as we see fit because we're the Central American Caribbean. Uh, so we try to capitalize on marketing opportunities through, um, to, through these regional organizations and uh, it's, a, it's a thing that we do on a regular basis where we talk about um, our challenges and how we can present ourselves as a region because um, we want to try to encourage people to travel to this part of the world, you know, instead of traveling to Europe or Africa, um, working together with regional uh, organizations help to attract the traveler, the global traveler to this part of the world. So. Uh, those are those are some of the things that we do along with um, our regional associations, uh, our regional corporation, and um, marketing is a big part of it. Um, so, uh, as I as I as I come to the end, before I I, I ask for a couple questions um, more, I just want to to let you all know that we are looking forward with with hope and, and optimism. I mean, it's 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 difficult, but. We really do believe in, in the partnerships and in people. Um, the people in tourism are resilient people. They've been able to pivot and do different things uh, uh, in time, but we know that people working in tourism want to get back to work. They love their work. They love the industry. And um, really, that is what we are trying to do. We're trying to get to a place where we can get people back to work. So collaboration, partnerships, um, you know, building back together sustainability, looking at where we're going in the future instead of doing things the same way we've always done it, creative new ways of doing things is, is um, really what we're looking at today. You know? So that brings me to the end of my slides that I wasn't able to share. Again, I'm sorry about that, but um, I did run through them and I hope that, that I was able to um, share with you some of the insights uh, over this. I can't believe that 45 minutes went so fast. Um, do we have any questions? I don't I see some, some messages in the chat, but I'm not sure. Liz, do you see anything in there? No, um, the floor okay. is open to any questions okay. for anybody. Mm -hmm. Yes, good morning again. If nobody has any questions, I would just like to throw something in here. Yes, please. Uh, thanks for the presentation. This is Andy Bahadur again. Now that we have seen the pretty much downturn of tourism, my focus and my degree and my training is in sustainability and sustainable tourism. I've been working with one of my past professors from USF, and we were putting together something of a pilot we wanted to do for San Ignacio and possibly for the greater country on incorporating principles from the sustainable development goals, the blue community. Um, the GSTC criteria. And now that a lot of places will be rebuilding, restructuring, um, this might be an opportune time to focus on the sustainability aspect of these businesses. Is that something that would be um, prioritized with the ministry? Something you can speak of? Yes, absolutely. And, and you know, like, I think you, you might have heard the, the buzzword build back better, right? We need to, we need to look COVID gave us a chance to pause and to look at what we were doing right and what we were doing not so right. So I think that um, definitely we have actually literally in the last uh, month or so, we've had so many meetings with the, uh, the, the collaboration with the conservation community in Belize and, and community tourism groups. Um, all of these things are focus areas for us definitely to see how we can we, we, I, I don't think it's going to be a situation where certain types of tourism will go away, but we're in a unique position now to be able to look at what works, look at what doesn't work, and restructure. So the answer to your question is absolutely yes. Um, sustainability is a big part. Community 
tourism is a big part. How do we work with communities and how do we work with, with the people in the industry who would benefit from, from tourism directly? So those are, those are some of the areas, absolutely. Any other questions? Any other questions? I guess not. Okay. Well, I want to just say thank you very much to you all. And, um, you know, it was really nice just sharing some of our some of our insights and, and what we have going on. As I said, um, we're recently back in this in, in, in office, or I am recently in office, but uh, I've worked in tourism for most of my adult life or all of my adult life. So it's, it's really, for me, I just wanted to share that um, I feel very fortunate to be a part of the solution. Uh, the COVID had, has really dealt a big blow to, to us and, and um, I, I feel fortunate and grateful that I can be a part of, of finding the solutions for the industry in Belize. So um, I was glad to share some of that with you today. And, um, and ho I hope I'll get a chance to meet, meet some of you in, in, um, in other, other, other areas. So feel free to reach out to the ministry if you need anything. Okay. Um, Nicole, I see someone is asking for your email address. So maybe we'd like to yes, type that out yes. for them. Okay, I can do that. Let me, it's um, just so you know, it's ceo at tourism.gov.bz. Yes. So, well, thank you for your undivided attention, everybody. Thank you, Mrs. Nicole Solano, for your time. So um, we break out for lunch, and we shall be back for breakout session three at 12. All right. So, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. See you, everyone. Thank you. See you, too, Nicole. Bye. Bye. <laughs>